My name is Miles. My name is Mo. And we're here live. What's going on? Today, yo? as promised, eight o'clock. We're live. And my man Mo's here. We got our sponsor, our first sponsor, yes. Love Period. And lead with love. You know what I mean? Like that's the motto. We love it. Let's do it. Yeah. So Mo, how was your week? Yo, my week was exciting. Mm-hmm. It, it, it wasn't like last week. My week was exciting. I did my um. Wait, hold on. When you say it wasn't like last week, last you week wasn't was uneventful. Be no, <laughs> last week was uneventful. But this weekend, I um, I went to my first uh, you know, how I have like a bachelor party. It was a backwards bachelor party. Mm. So a backwards bachelor party because of the pandemic, we couldn't do nothing. You know, so we pretty much hung out in the backyard, had a couple drinks or whatever. Mm. But this weekend, we actually went out to Mass. We went to a casino mm. in, in uh, Springfield. Right. And so uh, we went out there. We had a good time. I had some good steaks, some bomb uh, loaded potatoes. Okay. And then, uh, <clears throat> and then we ended up going golfing. I went golfing for the first time in my life. Mm. And that was mad fun. Okay. Mad fun. I could imagine. You know, so I did that and uh and and I had a great time. So it was, I had an eventful uh week weekend, you know, okay. but how was uh how was your week? My week was it was real. So it was like the first time uh I realized that I had to get out of my comfort zone as far as like being in the military or maybe, right? Mm. Because this week and leading up to this week, it was, like, the first time that I was told that, like, yeah, like, I might not be good enough. Mm. You know what I mean? So it was, like, basically, like, yo, like, you got to go through these procedures to maybe get retired early. And, you know, me, I still feel like I feel. <laughs> and it's still, like, you know, it's it's, it's definitely, a, it was definitely, like, a challenging for me. And it still is. But, uh that's what a good woman is for right because my wife she definitely held me down in on in this uh in this particular uh moment in my life and i feel like that's why we're doing this you know so it's all good so yeah um, we definitely gonna hit it up but uh uh yeah man so my fault i didn't mean to bring it down to such a somber moment but uh yeah that definitely was like the highlight of my week it was just like handling all those calls and somebody telling you like hey man you got four days to do this five days to do this and i i always knew it was all coming but it was just like man was i really ready but now, was it like er- is it early retirement or is it like like your 20 year yeah it's it's, it's definitely a, another conversation but it's okay, definitely okay. like just that <clears throat> time when someone's telling you like yo you might not be good enough like that's all i worry about you know what i mean it's when i'm like oh well i can do this or i can't do that but like i know like i look at longevity i look at like you know being a dad and all that stuff so it's it's, it's just so real at the end of the day but you know like i'm a man so i gotta definitely deal with, with whatever comes to me and, and handle it like that well, I think that as long as you are as good as you are, you know, to yourself, too, you know, and I think that's real important. You know, somebody else can sit and tell you that you're not you may not be good enough. Right. You know, but um, at, in the, at the end of the day, if you knew that you you did what you could to be the best NCO that you could be, right. you know, that's that's always something that comes into play. Yeah. <clears throat> So I always look at it like I right, like who who I touch, right? As far as like leadership and yeah. like how I am and like I always used to catch like older dudes doing things that I understood that maybe somebody else didn't understand and it's like man, like maybe it's too late for me to get this jewel or whatever the case may be, but I always look at it like like whatever you give somebody at the time that's just what you give them. And it no matter how long it takes them to record it in their mind, that's just what it is. You know what I mean? So I can't get mad at that or anyone or any. I can't blame anybody. I just like had to look at like what I built as far as a family, as far as people I mentor and how deep I'm going to take it mm-hmm. after. Yeah. To make it seem like what I got to make it seem like. I, I mean, if that makes sense to anybody else. But, again, you'll get it when you get it. Yeah, no, I hear you. So, uh, yeah, man. So, I mean, but on a high note, 
I got to go to my um my my man, you know, Gene. I got to go to his son Maddox's birthday party on Sunday and it was crazy. It was dope because just to see the growth and you know what I mean, just to see the kids play, you know, even with the Delta variants, whatever people might call it, it was it's it was a pool party that turned into like we just kicking it in the backyard and it was fly to me. So just to see the homies and 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 do that, it was something that like I haven't done in a long time because I just been in my cave. But uh, yeah, man, it was it was uh, it was dope. So that's what I did, and uh, yeah. So I know people want to hear the hard hitting topics that we got going. Yes, on, but, uh, yes. All right. <laughs> so so here go one for you. Okay. Okay. Right? All right. So you, how long after dating, right? Mm-hmm. Do you look for that reach? Meaning, okay, to where it was like, okay, is she gonna like try to pay for this, or like, is it just me? Because like, you know, you don't ever ask a female about her her social standings or like what she does financially, but you, you kind of look for it sometimes. So, like, you might be in a rush one day, and you might be like, oh shit, we at the beach, we gotta get some towels, so. Yo, go get some towels real quick. I'm gonna wait online, and then she, then next thing you know, you see the dog on, you see the what do you call that, like the the ten dollar Venmo charge or the Cash App charge. Um, for me, it, like it's it's all about comfortability, you know. So, um, as long as it takes for me, you know, it, once I feel comfortable with them you know uh paying for something so for instance it like it really there really isn't a time frame for me you know i like with my girl right if i know her situation right so if i know that she's a little tight for money yeah you know then i'm always gonna i'm always gonna look to pay for for stuff you know but it would it for her you know it's when she's ready you know, and like I said on the last show, um, or not the last show, but the show before that, you know, she, she a lot of times will do things that a lot of people wouldn't do. She would offer things, even if she didn't have it, you know. So in this particular situation, um, there's really not a, a time frame. It's, it's all about comfortability. So once I know that she's comfortable, mm-hmm. then I'm always going to... Uh, I'll always look to to pay for it until until she's ready. Now there may be times where I'm kind of looking like, damn, like yeah, go ahead. There, there's always times where I'll look and say, okay, well, is she gonna pay for this? You know, <laughs> it, it, it might. It That's might, what I'm saying. It might happen, but okay. you know, um, with her, I didn't have to do that because she was pretty much offering to pay for stuff from jump. And, and that was even with her, like if she, with, with her financial situation, cause she had to, she had to save money, you know? So, you know, I was more on the, Hey, let me pay for this. Let me get this. Let me get this until right. I felt comfortable enough where I'm like, okay, you can get this or mm-hmm. okay, you can get this, you know? Um, but there is no, like, I don't. I don't pay. We we are a true partnership. Get it? I you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So like, she, even if I pay for most of the things, mm-hmm. which that's not even necessarily true, but even if I did, she always comes back with so much more. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There, there's so much more that she comes back with, and and I'm I'm real lucky to to have her because she's uh and you know she definitely uh makes my life uh a lot easier you know just for the little things that she does right so you think that that's an anticipation for me or just on your part i think that my gate is on crazy my um yeah so you think that you anticipate that um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I anticipate the, you know, paying, paying for stuff. Definitely. No, you anticipate like, I guess like the reward aspect of it. 
I don't, um, I guess I don't know what you mean. I mean, do you mean like, am I anticipating like her giving back? Yeah. So it's like the gratitude. Like, so you, uh, like you're a giver, right. right? And because you're a giver, you might look at so said whatever as I'm going to get something back and whether it's knowledge or just whether it's just like understanding gratitude. So like, I believe that like we're all students to a certain level and like, no matter what you get a lesson from any event in your life, it depends on how you look at it. Okay. Right. So when you talk about being with someone and you, you have like a, a ultimate thing with, like you have like a, uh, a bond with like a okay. super bond like you might have with your girl right now and then it's like you always try to elevate that to where you might say okay i'm gonna marry this girl i'm gonna just like build an onward right and like you get children and things like that but i also feel like okay you can say okay i like things the way they are mm. okay. you know what i mean but like I feel like as people, as humans, we complicate things, right? We might complicate things by getting married or just by, like, putting that extra thing out. But, like, where and what do you seek from a person when the giving just becomes that? Uh, without the 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 money, like... The giving is just the compensation. Right. Without the monetary, like, so not money. Like, so, like, if you say, okay, I love my girl because she gives so much more and it doesn't have to be monetary, but what you give is monetary. So when you start looking at yourself as what you give is more, what does it change in the relationship as far as, is it like the ultimate, uh, I would say, is it like the ultimate I trust her, so we'll take it to this level. And have you even thought that far? I mean, so um, money's, I guess money has never been the, it would never be an issue with any girl. Um, I I don't look at it, like I always look for other things right. that they, that they can, you know, that I can you know, that we can build off of, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, my girl is a perfect combination. You know, she, mm -hmm. she is a giver. Um, we, we argue, uh, enough about things, but at the end of the day, when that smoke clears, we're, you know, we feed off of each other and we learn from each other every day. Okay. So like, I never look for anything material or anything like as far as money like no that. right so i'm talking about after that right so you know that all right so i feel like as humans we bring what we bring to the table so like okay if you going swimming if you're going to dinner that's an event mm -hmm. right and then like if you're if your girl says hey uh mo you got like you got some shit on your lip Right. And she wipe it like it's worth the dinner because you didn't want to like talk to the table next to you or whatever mm -hmm. doing that. And like that could be worth whatever the dinner cost. And that's how you might look at it. Right. So I'm talking about after that, because that builds a certain level of whatever you feel like you lacked in life. Mm -hmm. And then it, it just strengthens you as far as that. So I've, I'm like, OK, so where does it go with that person after that? Like you mean like marriage and or whatever. Just like do you think about stuff like that? Um It doesn't have to be marriage. It's just like, okay, this person is somebody that I trust to a level where XYZ is something that I'm curious about. Cause I believe that the most Bless. the level like um you have to trust somebody like I believe the key to attraction is curiosity, first off. Right. Right? So, like, and you can look at, like, money or whatever, like, okay, these are just, like, uh, 
Those like, are just things. Just things that you like <coughs> you poke you Excuse me. you poke the bear with. It's like okay, mm-hmm. XYZ, XYZ, okay, okay, okay. And you get curious, you find out, and then boom bop. And then what happens? Right? So then when you look at what happens, mm-hmm. then you ask yourself, Okay, who is she? And where am I? Right? And I just feel like that's a like a life thing. But go ahead. All right. Uh, it Don't looks about that. Uh, Mike got it. What's that? He got it. Like just you know what I mean? Like go ahead. If it's a question, Mike, ask the question. Is Mike. it a question or a comment? It's a comment. Well, it's like hey, it's a comment from Brooke Koki. Yeah. Saying a natural, a natural progression. Enjoy the moment for what it is. Let the moment make you, and it will take you. Where you are meant to be with that person. Come, Mike. Mike, come on, Mike, with that. Cause I can. Yeah, let just, me see it. Let yeah, see yeah. It. Right. No, oh. d- let him just read it again. I mean, or whatever. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah. All right. Brookie Cookie says, uh, "Natural progression. Uh, enjoy the the moment for what it um, what it is. Let what it is. Let let the moment make you, and it will take you." Uh, where you are meant to be as uh with that person. I agree I with mean, that. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's um that's that's one hundred one hundred percent. Yeah. You know, um you live in that moment and and no matter what, you know, you guys like I said, when a smoke clears, you guys are the only two that that are there. You know, so um I appreciate that comment. That was a that was a good comment. Yeah, that's your Brookie, baby. Brookie Cookie. Yeah, that's your baby. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so she can hit that with you, she can hit you with that, but and and what I'm saying is like I'm not gonna say it's the same thing because it's definitely not because that's her original thought. But the way I look at it is like, yo, that is fly. Mm-hmm. Like how she thinks like that, and if y'all in the same mindset, mm-hmm. but I always look at it like, and I guess because like I'm such a like a, and you know I'm astrological too. A point where I'm like, okay, I'm a, you know, I'm a ram. So I'm looking at it like, yo, like I, I gotta go ahead. I have to see what this person has more of, and then when, and then learn how to suffer together. And I, like, I, I honestly believe that, like, to build a real team, you gotta just like be in the total suck together. You know what I mean? Like all of that. Everything is good. Everything is good, but like, fuck that. Like, when it gets bad, like, let's 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 do it. I mean, when things do get bad, you deal with it in that moment. Yeah, you know, I and feel that and way. so like, I guess you're more on the like, you want to know beforehand. You know, mm. you you kind of want to. Am I wrong? Oh no, if I mean I'm, like, yo. So like, there's certain things you do like to see like if somebody's your ride or die, right? So it's like, yo, like if she's your ride or die whatever the case may be, then y'all talk heavy on whatever you have to do at that time. Right. But uh, I guess, like, I wouldn't say I more anticipate it, but I, I more anticipate the reaction. So here go, here go, here go a scenario. Okay. So last night, right, mm-hmm. I'm in here trying to, like, figure the graphics and everything out for the live, and I'm just trying to figure everything out. I'm, I'm grooving in my shit, right? So my wife, she's handling, you know, super max and she put max to bed. I see I, I'm watching on the cam. Max is going to bed mm-hmm. and she come down like, yo, Bosky chew through my phone. And Bosky's his dog. Yeah. Bosky's my dog. He chewed through the phone. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> I'm like, I got the, I got Kanye Donda, like the, <laughs> the fan tape on. I'm going like, what the fuck? And she's like almost in tears with the shit. And I'm like, she's like, yo, everybody has his phone number. Then, and she's like hitting me with like super duper panic mode, right? And I'm, in, I'm like, yo, what the fuck we gonna do now? You see what I'm saying? But like. When she came to me, that shit, like, strengthened me a little something. Because it's like, yo, like, the only reason she came downstairs when I told her, like, yo, this is, like, you don't come downstairs unless it's a dire emergency. Mm. And then she, like, yo, this is an emergency. It's, my, it's her phone. And I'm thinking, like, yo, insurance. So, like, with that two, three days, whatever. Yeah. But then she just, she wanted a hero at the time. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. So I got my man Mike on the phone. 
who I, I happen to know, and you know, all mics I believe are like lifesavers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so even like producer, co-producer Mike here today, <laughs> but my man Mike, I hope he watching. He on the got him on the phone. He say I'll be there in 45 minutes, and this is like 10 o'clock at night. You know mm. what I mean? So he came through. Everything solved, but could I get back in my space creatively? Probably not. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it all worked out for everyone. But I, I feel like that was like a, a test of time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was just like, you don't anticipate all those tests, but like, and everybody's like on their guard a little bit, I feel. Yeah. And this show is going not where I thought it would go, but uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I had a... <clears throat> I had a situation yesterday with with uh with Brooke and we were um we were outside on break mm -hmm. and she she has a way of bringing the situation up and then bringing it down you know so mm -hmm. we get outside and 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 this is one of those like these moments where. I have to adjust and I, I, I know that I have to adjust, mm -hmm. you know? And so she said, I was looking for some paperwork or something. And I looked in this one box and I found like all these like love letters from like all these other girls. And, you know, like, she's like, I'm not telling you to get rid of them, but you know, mm. shit, like, you know, they can't be out in the open like that. And so originally I was like, I got on the defense at first. Right. But then as I thought about it and as she's explaining it, she starts bringing it down mm. where she's like, you have to understand where I'm coming from. You know what I'm saying? So she's like, you, you need to understand that, you know, I, I'm coming from a, a, a different a different space you know what i mean and yeah. so you you know you I, i'm not telling you to get rid of it even though she 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 is you know what i mean she, mm -hmm. she's like i'm not telling you to get rid of it but she's telling me that it, it's not something that should be mm -hmm. should be in her um in, in her, her in her view mm. and and that's just an that's just an adjustment that i have to make because she's right Right. You know what I'm saying? So like I I have to make these constant adjustments where where she's absolutely right about the adjustments that I need to make. Right. Because those other memories, they can go in a box somewhere and just go away. And I you know, they could burn, you know, mm -hmm. if if you know because I'm not those are those are years of memories that I don't really need. I don't need them. They're not serving a purpose. And so she kind of made me realize that. And and where most girls would say, I want you to get rid of it. She's mm -hmm. like, you don't have to get rid of it. Just, you know, not don't have it in my So that place. brings like, me to my next this brings me to my next point. Mm -hmm. And Mike, check check to your text. I'll just text you real quick. But this brings me to my next point. So anything you don't do in front of your lady is cheating? Like, so, like, for example, right? If you hug my wife, right? Because you see her, like, that's my wife. You respect that as my wife. Mm -hmm. You give her a hug when you see her. But then, like, when when Brooke is here, you don't hug her? That's different? Any Anything that I... This is going to sound, like, real cliche. But anything that I do... Uh, away from Brooke, I can do in front of her. Exactly. That's my whole point. So I was at work today, and I was like, "Look, it." But now it's a, if it's an ex. If you see your ex, right, and she she roll up to you, she hug you, she hug you, right? Because y'all broke up on good terms. But is it disrespectful if you were Brooke and she hug you, and you don't like Brooke? Don't know who she is or never seen her. It's disrespectful if you don't introduce her as her old title. I think that like Oh, how you do it? Let's role play that. So shit. all right, so if I if I hugged my ex mm -hmm. in front of Brooke, then you know, I'd I'd get quick hug or whatever. Switch the and I, Yeah. And then um 
I actually I take that back. I won't I won't say that that's my ex in front of um in front of the the girl who's my ex. Mm -hmm. You know, it really depends on how it plays out, but for the most part I don't. And then after the fact, I would say you know, I used I dated her you know, a while back or whatever. To me, that's worse. No, no, it's not worse. Because so I'm, because after I'm, the because, hug and all that. Yeah, but it de like it depends on, like, what what is the hug? Like, you can't. It can be a quick like, hey, what's going on? You know, hey, you know, and nah, it would, yeah, know, it's so not, it's like, not. Well, I mean, it. it so really, I'm it, talking about like, you get the embrace. So like, yo, so like, all right, you and Brooke walking th through the mall. Right, you see one of your old joints. She like, and y'all broke up on good terms. She like, Mo, mm -hmm. it's been two years. Hit you with the hug, and then I introduce Brooke as my current girlfriend. But you, but you, you take the hug. Yeah, All right. I'm, that's I'm, what I'm saying. Yeah, so I'll like, that's the, not I'll the, take the hug. Yeah, because so it's because it's not like it's not like I'm fucking her in the middle of the mall. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah, it, like yeah. so so no, like you. I, I'm not. You know, it's not like I'm grabbing on her booty or anything like that. Yeah, or disrespectful. But like the thing about it is, if Brooke felt some type of way it's about to say something. about that, then she would. I would want her to direct that to me, so that that way. The next time something like that happens, you know. then I'm then I'm not gonna do that, you know. And and it's just those constant adjustments. Yeah, you're a relationship expert. That's a hundred percent right. Because is what could you do for that? Go ahead, Mike. You're dying to say something. Yeah, just read. It. Just go ahead. Talk on the mic. Talk heavy. Go. Well, uh, Brooklyn Cookie um, says honestly. You always hug your friend and ex in front of your significant other. It shows that there's nothing to hide. Exactly. So again, to her point and Thank to you my point, yo, it. and to my point is like anything you change in front of your lady mm -hmm. or whatever, that shit is like it. I'm not saying it's cheating or it's it's like a it's a crazy line, but it's a crazy line as far as crossing because like you acting different, that means that the feelings is different. Yeah, and and I mean like I, I'll go a step further with a situation that I had uh, in, mm -hmm. in the beginning of the relationship. There was one night where um, Brooke Brooke was in the bedroom, and so. I was talking on the phone, and I always talk on the phone, always. Mm -hmm. And so she made a comment and said, you're acting weird. Mm -hmm. You're in here talking on the phone real quiet. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I was just trying to talk so that you, you know, that so that I didn't wake you up. Ooh. And so then, like, I started to look at, at the scenario. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know what? That does sound a little different. So I have to, I've got to be myself no matter what. Like if mm -hmm. I'm talking loud, you know, normally, then I just talk, I can talk loud at like 11 o'clock at night. I play my video games at night and she doesn't wake up, you know, but when I change up something, it, it gets a little, a little weird. Right. So I'm going to let Mike just take the floor real quick. Mike, just have a seat real quick. I got to do something real quick. So Mike, Mike is on here and just have Yo, Mike, right. what's good, Mike? Shit. What's going on? So, <clears throat> so I got to tell this story real quick. Um, I was, I was on. No, I'm not gonna tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> so I was on the phone. It's funny. I was on the phone with. I was on the phone with my ex while I was uh, on my way here, um, and she lives down in. Um, in South Carolina, uh, in Georgia. And so uh, she was telling me about her camping trip and how her sister was uh, was scared of, like, of camping, even though she wanted to go on a trip. You know what I'm saying? So she was telling that story, and then I got another call from one of my other friends and told me that his friend had gotten jumped by six people 
camp eh, camping? No, not camping, not camping. <laughs> oh my God. No, he got he got jumped by <laughs> by six people. But the weird part is is that he got jumped in his house. How does somebody walk into Who your house? Who let him in? <laughs> Well, you know what the funny Ooh. part? Your funny part is, I went to my friend's house on on Sunday, mm-hmm. and I was like, you know, uh, you know, we were, he was showing me all the improvements he made to the to the house. Mm-hmm. He's like, I put forty grand into this house, mm-hmm. but I have to move. I go, right. I go, why do you have to move? He mm-hmm. goes, because the next door neighbor sits there. Somebody's playing basketball right now. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the next door neighbor keeps coming into my house unannounced and wants to talk to me. And I'm and I'm like <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck are you doing in my house? You know? <laughs> I don't want you in my house. We can talk. But you gotta call me or what in the world is going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, we just fucking with you. Oh, okay. Oh. But go ahead, but go you gotta call me or do something <laughs> to let me know you're coming. You can't just walk into my house. <laughs> so going with that jumping, I the, what did they do? Did they just walk in unannounced to the house and just jump yeah. the guy? <laughs> yeah, they just jumped they so they walked in, they they and for whatever reason this guy gets jumped and he goes to the hospital. And I'm just like, how did they get in the house, bro? Like I'm gonna see six people come in the house. <laughs> you know, it's not like I'm gonna, you know, open a door for just six people. It's not gonna not gonna happen. Yeah, shot fired. So <laughs> Well yeah, but if you're in- but see, if you're in your basement, you're not gonna really hear or see anybody come in. Yeah, and, yeah. And I and that's why they sit there and you know you get something that lets you know something's wrong, like a dog or a cat mm-hmm. or you know a bird that that says hello there or something <laughs> that says you know something. <laughs> Trust me, I had <laughs> I had a parrot that every time I walked by him, he would go hello there. And I'm like, why are you saying that? You know, and I yeah. it just drove me crazy. Yeah, I had I, hear to, you. I actually had to give that that bird away to my ex girlfriend because it, it if it drove me crazy, it drove her crazy. And I just wanted to do that just to oh my goodness stick it to her more or less. You know, <laughs> right. thanks, Mike. thanks for sitting there, my man Mike. He's the best executive producer. Mike. He's the best executive producer anybody could get. Thanks yes. for sitting there, Big Mike. I appreciate you, good brother. So, yeah, man. That that is, you know, <laughs> Big Mike took it. Yo, so if you guys see like the overlays and everything going slow, man, hey, that's just the process. You know, we 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 try, we trying to get a new computer, and I got like a couple of dudes. Oh, yo, uh, so fun friends and family. Oh, okay. thank you for subscribing. Uh, right. too. For sure. Uh, she said that I am. Uh, can you bring that back up? Yeah, Mike could just read it. Hold on. So fresh friends says said, I'm, I'm enjoying the real conversation. You guys are great. Thank you for that. Thank friends, you. Friends, family. But listen, guys, I was in the middle of an ad read, but like um. There's a link on the on the on the bottom left that says buy us a cup of coffee and that goes to support the show. You know what I mean? I don't know how much a cup of coffee is or if that link even works. But if it doesn't work, if it does work, just let us know in the comments, man. Like this is like just totally impromptu. We both have full time jobs and it's just like it's just fun to be having this real conversation. Uh, yeah, 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 it really is. Yeah. This is therapeutic. Right, yes. Um Jackie Goddess is uh, a podcast that's also in Schenectady. Yes. And yes. Me, the producer of that show, me and him go back and forth every day. He texts me, he said, man, your overlays and shit is coming in latency. Like, the latency <laughs> is crazy. I say, yo, thank you, man. So we try to take the overlays off just now. But uh, if we can get that M1 Mac, that should not happen no more. His show, his show it's is funny uh, as fuck. Oh my god! It, yeah, and, and he's a funny. Uh, what? Is, it's Mondays, right? It's Mondays that he has a new show. So every, every they uh, shoot Mondays, and it comes out based on he's also a father too, going for his master's degree. So it it, it come out when it come out. But uh, just subscribe to it now and, and catch up. It, it's a, I mean? it's a fun it's a fun show. Um, and if you like this, I was show, on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This motherfucker was on it. But <laughs> if you like our show, you're you're gonna like their show too. Right. They, they are they are just so fun. Uh, 
and and they they have a good time. They have a, a couple. Who the Ed and uh, who who's what's the other Pierre um, and Ed Pierre, and Pierre. Pierre yeah. And it's it's all about like to me what I see it as you know. And I don't really want to just get into their show. But yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. they all grew up together, but they have way different POVs. Yeah, and almost like Mo and I, but like Mo and I is it's, it's a little bit different because like we kind of focus on we didn't grow up together right you see what i'm saying so it's just like their shit is like how could you think like that yeah motherfucker like <laughs> we grew up together like we slept in the same bed you, you used to like you stopped peeing in the bed before me type <laughs> shit and then they just go there so it's a dope show check it out if y'all if y'all listening to this yes, show y'all please. definitely gonna enjoy that but uh Back to what we was talking about, Mo, because I feel like when I put Mike here, he just started filibustering, and uh, <laughs> yeah, this shit went, this shit went left. But, uh, <laughs> I, uh, what do you? So y- you and and Brooke, obviously, y'all on that. Yo, if you could do it in front of, if you can't do it in front of her, or if you gotta hide something, that's betrayal, right? And betrayal was damn near next to cheating, right? Um, yeah, so, I mean, the thing about it is, I, I Mm. try to stay, I try to stay myself in front of her no matter what. Right, right, right. You know, and Mm -hmm. so, oh, what do we got? Nah, good looking out, Sarah, for buying us a cup of coffee. I appreciate it. The link works. Go ahead, though. Oh, nice, nice. So, I mean, thank you. I appreciate that. So, yeah, so, um, we do everything, um anything in front of each other you know what i mean and so like i try not to switch up yeah, what's anything you do no nah, like, you, you do in front of her uh, nah nah not it's not, not yeah it's not heavy i don't think i don't think that's a that's that's not a thing for us what do you mean bro, bro? what you talking not, about for this us bro, shit? Like, I, do, I do not i shit in front of my wife that's you okay so, i am not doing that bro okay we're we're not listen we're not there and we will never be there I can tell you that one hundred percent. I I will never I will never be there. You would never do to in front no. of me. No. No. Hold on. Would you call Would you call your father daddy in front of your wife? I wouldn't call my I don't call my dad daddy now. What do you call him? Dad. Oh, you don't call your father daddy? I don't call him daddy. I call him dad. I call my mom man. mom. No, bro. I, you don't you don't call your mother mommy? No. That's I'm not a weird. child. I can't do it. You think that's child shit? Yeah, I can't do it. That's how. This is how I think. I have a friend that does that too, and oh, she. Me, I'm your friend. Well, no, I'm just saying I that call does it my too. Mother, that mommy does that. That daddy, does that daddy. too. I know that you that you do, but it it really depends on how you grew up, and I how my you parents. Your, your father kicked you down the stairs, no, bro. Like it, that's love. I don't. Yeah, and and for that, I don't call him. I've never called my dad daddy. No. Oh, well. no, never. I've never done it. Damn. Maybe as a kid, like as a like really, really, really young, like five years old. But I just call it his dad and his mom. Damn. You know, but I still so show formal. them I still show them uh you know the utmost respect, but I just I just don't say daddy. I, I don't say daddy, I don't say mommy. No, so. I, don't, I don't even say auntie. What? Yeah. Would you how you call your aunt? Or? Aunt. Aunt? Yeah. That's just weird. Aunt Nisi. Nisi? Okay. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. You live hard. So I always tell you that I, shit, man. I live I live by like I have there's certain things that I just I can't I can't break. I call my father right now on the phone, he'd be like, I daddy. I call get my son right now. <laughs> I go pull my son up right now from bed. He'd be like, Dada, daddy. Like that's the shit. Like that's to me. Like that's like the pinnacle, right? Yo, there. you say it like your son's a Spartan, though. The way that you say my it, my son is a Spartan. He's a data. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. I must break you. <laughs> that's a fact. Yo, that's a fact. If I'm getting my son right now, I'm like, yo, Max, <laughs> him, he gonna do. Yeah, that's a fact. Like I feel like that's what it is, man. Ne- yo. Our sound guy is finally working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, um, that's that's crazy. Like, I mean, it's not crazy because that's your life, but like, yeah, like I call my mother mommy. I call my mother mommy and I tell I feel like I tell my mother 
my mother knows every single thing about me, right? And then like, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> every single thing she know where to do everything, mm-hmm. and then my wife does. But this is like, but my wife knows that like, yo, when I say mommy, I call my mother mommy all the time, right? Only, and my siblings the same way. Yeah. That's why, I like, you say call you my mom. Like, mom is like, yeah, it's like, you mad. So it's like, yo, mom. No. Nah. No. Nope. And and my my mom and dad know that it takes so much to get me mad. It takes so much. Fuck it. It would get me mad if you didn't call me daddy if I was your father. Yeah, it takes I so feel much. away it's, about that shit. It takes so much to get me mad. But at the same time, I get mad at work every day. Yeah, that's crazy too. It, so it, it takes a lot, but it that's all this pressure. Yeah, yes, it sounds like you pressure, got your fucking like, priorities mixed up, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so because how the fuck you get mad? <laughs> how you get mad at work and then you got a whole family? I get I get tight at work. Damn, that's shit crazy. I man. I get I get heated. That's all you need to think about, good brother. Nah, I, I you know I'm at work eight hours a day. I don't see I don't see my family, um, I don't I don't see my my family the same way that everybody else sees their family either. Bro, I never see my family. No, hell no. Like I saw my mom. I'm gonna say like last last Christmas. I'm about to see her this weekend because my my brother's having a baby. Okay. But uh, yeah, dude. Like, but still, I hit her up every day. Like, mom, how you doing? Where's your mom live? In Delaware. Yeah, my mom lives in Troy. My parents live in Troy. Right, you need to take some responsibility. And no, it's shit. not about taking responsibility. It's just I have a whole life. Like I feel you. No, <clears throat> hey. You know, so, like. That's why you don't call her mommy. That's not, it. That's not why I don't call her mommy. Well, I it's just, part of the reason. No, it's not. It's not part of the reason. It is part. All right, but whatever. I'm I didn't call my mom this. mommy since I was, like, five years old. And I lived in her house until I was, like, 18, 19 years old. So Damn. that's not the that's 19 not the, years old. Yeah, 18 or 19 years old. Yes, brother. Okay. 18, I got my no, I so, got my first apartment when I was 19. I I'll fuck with that. So like I always think about that like when is it too much like as far as like living with your parents. So uh, when a great leader that I know, Colonel Conte, he told me something one day and I don't even know if it was formal or informal. He goes my kids are going to be on the 1890 plan, which is when they turn 18, they got 90 days to figure it out. And I support them with that, whatever, but their room start getting smaller and you just start building into fucking their comfortability up <clears throat> until they like, yo, I got to take it on my own. I I don't think that there's... Oh, this is so hard to say. I don't think... Take your time, Mo. I, I'm right. You see me rocking, right? I'm sitting there like, I don't think... No. Yeah, you uh, have I, kids, I, don't, I don't think that there's a, a time frame for, you know, it really depends on who you are and where you are as a person. Um, now, some people can stay home until they're about 50. 50? Some Stand people, some under people your can, mama house? Yeah, some people can do it. Um... Those people but I that's, call starts with an L, ends with an R. No, 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 it, it, no, no. I, I feel so empathetic. No, I'm just saying, like some people can stay at at home for a long period of time. You know, me, I can't do it because. Well, you didn't do it. No, I can't. I can't. I cannot. It was the last time that I stayed with my parents. I realized that, and that was about like four years ago. That's when I realized. I need to get I need to get my own like now. I need to figure it out now. And I had to get my stuff together. And it was uh I had left my I left my apartment and my parents said just move in with us for a little while until you get yourself back on your feet. Fair. Right? Yeah. And that was the moment that I realized never again. Never. Or or if like and and it wasn't because they were doing anything wrong. That's that's what made me upset with with the situation. So, the thing was, was my parents were telling me to do stuff mm-hmm. that I should be doing. Right, you understand? Like and so, bed and, shit. and so, no, that they never told me to make, make my bed. That's a callback. You know, no, I, 
But anyway, no, go ahead. Now nah, finish your shit. Hold on, yeah. Mike. Just go ahead. Come in, t- t- if it's that important, you come. No, you come. Go ahead. Now you talk. It says uh, F- because everyone deserves shelter. Inc. Mommy and Daddy Forever is definitely a West Indian thing. Oh, that might be right though, because we West Indian, and like we say, mommy and daddy, and that it's it's more of a sound of respect than you saying mom dad like to me mom dad is so stern like yeah you're not an adult and what i was gonna say to you is like yo when your pops kick you down the stairs and shit that's probably like saying where it's like yo he loves he loves saying that. nah because if you <laughs> no honestly like no it, it's just like some trauma-based shit like yo if you remember like you're getting kicked down the stairs and like if your parents live in the same house when you hit that threshold and your father was like, yo, take out the trash. Yo, so, when you was about to hit that creek, it was yo, like, oh, shit. Like so real, real quick. Re- hey, your pop's shorter than you, too. <laughs> real, <laughs> real quick recap. My dad kicked me down the stairs when I was about 16 years old because of me brushing by him and kind of moving him out of the, trying to move him out of the way. <laughs> yo, and he kicked me down the stairs. He showed you. <laughs> He said, you ain't, you ain't no man. He said, you ain't no he said, oh, man. you think you're a man, huh? <laughs> well, he punched me in the chest. Yeah. And, he, and then he's just like, you know, this is Sparta. And just, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know. You know what, though, man? That's what it takes sometimes. And I think but, a lot of kids don't know but that But getting, getting back to what I was saying is my parents were telling me to do things that technically I was supposed to do. And it didn't hit me until... I got mad about it and I went up I went up to my room and <laughs> Yeah, I went up to my room and closed the door. And I'm like, yo, I feel like I'm like fifteen again. And I'm like, yo, I am fifteen again. <laughs> like that because <laughs> they're like, You should be washing these dishes and I'm like, Yeah, but I didn't make the dishes and my dad's like, But you're part of this house, aren't you? And I'm like oh, I'm like that shit. I'm like, Yeah, but I didn't he's like, Yeah, so wash the dishes. I went up to my room and closed the door, and I'm like, I hate this house. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like 32 years old. I'm like, I hate this house. And I'm like, yo, I can't be. <laughs> I'm yo. like, yo, I can't, I can't be living here like this because I can't be having, I can't keep having these conversations with myself, bro. You know what's crazy about that shit? Because my parents got divorced when I was like really young, right? Yeah. And my mom, she kind of go for that shit. She like. I never had to wash a dish, never had to do anything, go in the mm-hmm. room, whatever. Yeah. Bring shorties through, whatever, anything. Right? And it was like, yo, this is like the perfect place. Like, my mom's house is like the place where a kid could grow <laughs> until he's like 40 or, or 60 or some yeah. shit, right? Yeah. But my father, he the type of dude, like, if he say some shit, he would fester on that shit. Like, yo, yeah, you said that shit because you think you're stronger than me? Or you think that shit because you could beat me? And I'm like, nah, daddy, I just don't feel like watching this. He's like, yo, wash all the dishes. <laughs> he's like, yo, wash all the dishes. <laughs> then he'd be like, yo, like, type shit like that. That's how my pop says. He'd be like, yo, wash all the dishes. And I'm like, you know, you start to get taller than your father and shit like that. And it's like, yo, this little motherfucker don't think I could test him. But it, it come to like, it become like a nuts on the table type shit. <laughs> Yeah, son, because my father, bro, that motherfucker be like Smith and Weston, motherfucker. Like, where you at with your shit? You know what I mean? And, like, that's the crazy shit. You said talk about the fridge as a child. The fridge? Well, that's Jeff Proctor because, so, Jeff was the my. chief? No, Jeff huh? Proctor. So, Jeff was my, he was my first roommate when I moved upstate. Okay. And these motherfuckers, I don't even know if this is what he's talking about, but, like, him and Ben Katita, these motherfuckers live, like, hooligans like to a shit where like these motherfuckers are married now and god bless their wives because jeff used to eat taco bell every fucking day and they were both volunteer firefighters Mm -hmm. to the point where it was like yo bro you got a job motherfucker Mm -hmm. right and he'd be like yo the community needs us this and like he's going out 2 30 in the morning 4 30 in the morning and he got to drive to fucking North Carolina the next day. Mm-hmm. You know, some shit. And I'm like, yo, bro, all those other motherfuckers that's in the community, what about them? You know what I mean? And yeah. then he's just be like, just have stern talks to me about this shit. And like, 
we had a bare refrigerator as far as like them and I was like yo certain shit you gotta have in the fridge like ketchup like certain like you know regular shit ketchup at least have some juice packets or some shit next to it in case you bring a young lady home and um Oh, that was <laughs> I think that was you. Yo, what the yeah, what up? Yeah, Mike trying to surprise us. But yeah, man. I thought it was you. And it was like, yo, that was like the illest bachelor pad experience. But I would always, like, I would always concentrate on having a clean bedroom and bathroom. Here we right? go. Right? To the Here point where go. these motherfuckers is like, yo, you got your own bathroom, motherfucker. And the bedroom, like, was my shit. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And we had all our other corny shit, but it never got there because we was bachelors at the time. So these guys are married now with children, and uh, that's all I got to say about that. Thanks, <laughs> Jeff, for the comment. But, yeah, man, so, like, as far as, like, being at your parents' house, like, my mom was that person you could fucking fest on. The, but I think it's different because my parents are separated, and, like, my father would always challenge me on shit. He'd be like, hey, you think, you think that? Because I told you to wash the dishes, I think you less than a man. Yo, my my dad, <laughs> yo, my dad was a psychological genius, bro. <laughs> yo, so okay, you both. Yo, my dad, right? <laughs> he would, he would like punch me in the chest, uh-huh. uh, or something like a day before, right? For nothing. Oh, hold on, my fault. Jeff is talking about. My Uncle Rich, that's on there, and he's the best dude that he used to put me on the fridge and just teach me concentration. <laughs> Dead ass. Like, he used to teach me some shit called the pain. So, like, I was always the same way I am. And he's like, yo, calm down. But, like, yo, face this fear first. And put me on top of the fridge to where it's like, yo, you going to jump? You going to try to scale down or whatever to the point where I'm, I'm just there thinking. And that's the shit, like. Everything you see on TV, like, my Uncle Rich used to do that shit on me and just tell me to breathe. Yo, my dad used to put me on the fridge, bro, but, like, so he wouldn't ask me no questions. He'd just put me on the fridge and say, jump. <laughs> and I'd start, I'd start shaking. Oh, shit. I'd start shaking every time. That's abuse. <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah. and then, no, you don't see that nah. abuse now, yeah. Nah, my, but... But my dad was a psychological genius. Hold on, but real quick, my fault. Before you talk about your dad on the shit, if I put my son in the fridge right now and told him to jump, guess what he gonna do? He gonna do a flying heel kick. He's gonna jump. <laughs> Facts. And mm. if y'all wanna see it, I'll put it on Facebook, nah, Instagram nah. tomorrow. Go ahead. Nah, I believe you. Yeah. But my dad, he would, he would like, like play box with me or like and he, he'd hit me like real hard, right? <laughs> yeah. And so, like, he knew that he hit me hard, <laughs> but, like, I would act like I could take it. And then when I would turn around, like, I'd be like, Ugh, you know. And so the next week, I like, I, I would know that he could hit me that hard. <laughs> and I would actually do something wrong. Mm. And he'd get in that same stance, like, kind of, like, hunched over, like, yo, hey, come over here. I'd be scared to go over there. And you got a big brother too, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, yo, my my big my, my brother, he was an instigator. That's where I get it from. And uh. he would he would say, "Go on, Maurice, go on." <laughs> you know. And so my dad would be like, I, "I'm not gonna hurt you," you know. <laughs> I I walk over and he put his hand on my my arm like real quick, like, oh, and I would get scared, shit. you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so he would just fuck with me because I like as a kid I always thought like at at any moment I could get this work at any given moment whether I do something good or bad I can get this work from him. I feel like that's how you're supposed to feel as a child. Oh, that's wrong. Mm. I feel like yo your father like as like I feel like so a mother and a father serve different roles, right? Yeah. So I feel like yo. Your, your father is supposed to fucking put that fear of God in you. Yeah. All the men in your life are supposed to do that shit. Until you feel like you could overcome that, and then that's when you graduate. Like, that's like another mm. belt. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know he's not trying to kill you. Yeah. He's just trying to show <laughs> you, like, yo, this motherfucker is trying to punch through your chest. I punched you in the chest. It's motherfuckers that will punch through your chest. Yeah. 
Go to a, sleep. A punch from a grown man is a lot different than than a punch from like. Nah, something. but like with rage and hate, nah, you get hit hard from a younger dude or hurt more than your pop. Like your pops, he knows how to regulate his shit a little better to you. But like, let somebody who you you, you bro, smash that girl bro, punch you. you, you yo, you're shit. Come on. you're not. So you're you're not hearing what I'm saying. Go ahead. Then, what me. I'm saying is that. Your pops, because he's your pops, he only goes at like a 50, 60%, right. 70% because he knows better. But if he cranked that shit up to 95, it's a lot different from a punch from any kid with rage, bro. Any kid. Just, my dad could have mm. lit me up, and he didn't because he's my dad. Bro, this is what you don't understand. I don't right? understand. Please. You don't understand older man wisdom. You will never get that extra 30% because now you're curious of what he can bring. So you, your anticipation of him fucking punching you crazy and you know what he might have because he, he, he was like fucking with you at 30 and 40%. That shit is in your mind and that shit just blew up. That's why my dad's a psychological genius. No, bro. Every, like once you get to a certain age, you know. Like, how to do that shit. That's a whole fact. Yo, my dad can still punch. You see what I'm saying? How you still got that shit? And everybody in the studio is like, yo. Came bro, up. it's like this. <laughs> yeah. But but that's what he was supposed to. So he, he did his job. And that's why the next time you see him, you should call him daddy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fact. Mike, you want to say something? You're looking at us like you want to say something. No? No. All right. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So, like, when you get that type of energy... From an older person, it's just like when your mother tells you, she's not good for you, or whatever. Like, you think twice about that shit. Or you might say, fuck you, mommy. The drawers is good. But you're never going to say that. But it's always going to have you thinking, right? Because she knows what to say and when to say it. My mom never tells me that a girl is not good for me. Yeah, because you don't get girls like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, she never tells me that a girl is not good for me because... Like, I know from my mom's body language right. and from her tone mm -hmm. if she approves of, uh, if she approves of her or not. I can I can just tell. Oh, so you're judging your mom's by her character. Bro, I can okay. just I can just tell. I get it. You know, and and it's just the way that she kind of reacts. She never says that she doesn't like somebody, but okay. I know. You know. Okay, yeah. But that's just the relationship that I have. So you, so you judge, you judge women based off what you thought your mom felt without even talking to your moms. No, so it makes it harder to want to be with somebody that your parent doesn't approve of. Hmm. It makes it real tough. Now I'm not saying that it can't happen. I'm not saying that I can't be with somebody that my parent doesn't approve of. However, it's very difficult. So how long before you bring him home? Because my shit be like a year, two joints. My parents met Brooke after like three months. So, so you don't you say you don't be around your parents like that, but you 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 willing to bring your yeah. lady home early? Oh, my parents came to my house. There was like no. They wanted to see her. Um, yes. Okay. My my mom was like, "Okay, we're coming over for coffee," and I said, "Okay, bet." Big shout out to anybody who buys a cup of coffee. coffee. That was a good segue, Mo. But go ahead. Yeah. So <laughs> your pun. Oh, but yeah, you a chef. You you brew. You probably got like all these fancy roasts and shit like that. Bro, now. my my, I have a coffee maker that costs. 250. Okay. I gotta go make it that cost 350. <laughs> he, he always trying to challenge somebody. I was no, gonna I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna I was gonna I was gonna I don't know why you said that. I was gonna make a point though. I don't know why you said that. I know you, if you would have let me make no, my point. I know my coffee maker cost 169. It's the brute in it, but it has the copper shit. Go ahead. Mine is the uh I have like an espresso. Yo, I always use my ten dollar ten dollar Mr. Coffee. Where? Yeah, I swear to God, yeah. I always use my Mister Coffee. Yeah, it's just but the gross, but the re the the real reason why I use it so much is because I I don't drink like the Nespresso to me is like almost like 
special. It's a dessert or something for a special occasion, right. you know, but I always use my Mr. Coffee. And so I uh, I made my mom an espresso for the first time, and she did not like that shit. Yeah, it's pretty gross, bro, for the first time, I think, an espresso, right? Yeah. All right. What do so, we got? It's, it's, Sarah, it's about to be it's about Sarah to be Sarah said, yeah, how Sp- similar or different are you compared to your mother's? I think that I'm the exact, my mom is like, come, come in, Mike, together. Come around here so everybody can see yeah, you. Yeah, ask obviously. the question again. Yeah, ask the question again. Hey, how similar or different are you compared to your mother's? And we'll we'll, okay. we'll close the show with this, but I think that um all the all the questions will answer all the questions. I feel like I'm the exact same person as my mother. Just with I just have a little bit more courage than her, but she's my sounding board. That's my baby girl no, for life. They're asking about your significant other. Oh, my wife is my mother like my wife is my mother i would say i wouldn't say downscale but like they're best friends damn near this is crazy like and they don't get along as far as like opinion wise a lot of times but they can they can hang out longer than i can hang out with either of them for the most amount of time my my mom actually okay go ahead mo my mom actually sits there and like, I feel like she interrogates my dates and be like, you know, and tries to trick them into like, to, you know, revealing something that I don't want to or I'm not looking for. Mm. Ooh. Mm. I okay. I don't know what that should mean. Good. Can you my- elaborate? You know what it means? No, go ahead. Uh, well, well, it kind of, it kind of like, it's like sorcery. You know, it, 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 she. It, she knows exactly what I what I would like, and she's try and she what she tries to to push on to me what she likes as well. So mm. she kind of like manipul- more, I, I would say manipulates the situation to in her favor. So she may make sure that you know she gets a person that she likes as well as you know what I'm kind of not really looking for sometimes, but I. <laughs> I don't know. Oh yeah, I don't know either. Um, I get it though, cause she's protective of you, and I think that's the mother's role. So go ahead, Mo. I think um, <clears throat> Brooke is my mom when she was younger. Mm. She she is my mom when she was younger. Um, my mom was a little like she would say little things, little hints, you know. Um, to kind of you know try to elaborate on things you know what i mean um but now my mom is very 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 outspoken just like she's like she's she's like me now like she's just very like tell you how it is you know because i always saw my mom as this mom you know Mm. what i mean and so maybe that's why Never, never mommy (laughs) <laughs> my God, God. <laughs> right. Mike, you come Mike, you but but something? yeah, like like she is my mom when she was younger. Uh, not not now. She she's not. You, right. You're kind of shocking some of the audience that Brookie Cookie is actually your your one and only. Of course, bro. Like we talked about that. <laughs> who yeah. who? Wait, I'm sorry. Who's saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Sarah Screwloose uh, so is uh, kind of like, you know, yeah. shocked. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. That's right. that's are there, her. Are there any more questions, Mike? Well, uh, no. But Brooklyn Cookie just says Mo's mom is so sweet. Be lucky and be considerate. Half the sweetheart she is. Ah, uh, I feel like you guys are rehearsing this shit. Just play myself show. <laughs> play myself show. <laughs> but uh, a uh, couple things. So if you like the, you know, the love only shirts, please look in the description and it's you know lvprd.com and always put play myself show in the in the comments as far as like whatever you make your purchase as and whatever the case may be but this is something that we're working on as far as the sponsoring uh and more of an experiment and we do read the comments y'all. all so of the comments we read the comments and we'll answer all the comments and also i always <laughs> like to say buy us a cup of coffee if you like what you see we can only get better 
And last but not least, if you want to see more Mike, if you want to see more Mike, more Mike, more Mike, who told us he didn't want to be on camera, but he needed a shirt as a writer. (laughs) This dude, no, 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 not for president, Mike. It's just do your job because he's supposed to be doing ad words and tags, but he's Mike. He's always involved. There are two mics here, but you don't hear the other mic because he's doing his job. But Mike, Mike's still doing his job. Mike's doing Mike's his job. Mike's still doing his job. But he's in. He wants to be on camera, but he told us his only, his yeah. only, his only deal for helping me was I can't put him on camera. But we, can't, he can't stay the fuck off camera. <laughs> Mike, Mike loves being on camera. And he's I have to red. agree. I have to agree. Yeah. Mike he likes told me, being on camera. He told me I don't want I don't want to be on camera or I'm I'm not coming if I have to be on camera. If y'all want to see Mike, <laughs> definitely yeah. definitely leave comments. Yeah. That put you a one in the more. chat if you want to see Mike. <laughs> yes. If you yes. want to see more Mike, put a one in the chat and we'll try to get Mike a, we'll write Mike a segment and write him in. Uh but thank you guys for coming. Yes, showing us love you. and i think we might have to go tuesday next week but we'll talk about that if if <coughs> um love all you guys Appreciate love all you guys it. thank you love thank you guys um to play us out all right y'all. to play us out fuck it we'll do it live yeah do it live to play us out we, we have music to play us out <laughs> no 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 yeah that's perfect yeah no yeah i don't know that i think that's good while it's live because we got to put that for like the youtube end card as part of the algorithm no, okay. Sucks, but that's what we got to do. I thought we were going to But we can it. also go back to the music. I, after, for, I forgot. That's that to play for 20 seconds. That's to play for 20 seconds. And then we can go back to the, the music, and you guys can jam but out. But you don't buggy, though. You don't buggy. I don't buggy? Nah, you don't buggy, bro. You don't buggy.